Okay, and for anyone doing this later, uh, two yoga blocks, two books, something, or one yoga block and maybe a book the same height, um, and a band and possibly a small ball. All right, so let's begin. Uh, I thought we'd start on our back today, so a little different. Uh, I think you can see me okay, I can see you. Yeah, we're good. So we'll just do some of the pelvic tilt, so the, the, the bigger version of the pelvic tilt, which can be called the cog exercise. So you have three cogs, pelvis, ribs, and skull. So just relax your arms by your side, knees are bent. Just let yourself settle. So feel how much of your rib cage is, hopefully all of it, but sometimes you have that little lift in the front, but just over time, hopefully we can change this, but just how much of our ribs are on the floor, how much of the pelvis, how much of the skull. And then we'll just like, I'll think of three rocking chairs. So we'll start at the pelvic rocker. So we'll tip the, let's tip the pelvis forward, shake it up a bit. So tip the pelvis forward. That should drag your head forward too, if you let it. So there's a, there's a little bit of a delay, of course, before it travels up your spine, the head gets dragged forward and your ribs actually get tipped backwards. That's why they lift up. So the ribs are in the middle doing the opposite. And then if you rock your pelvic rocker towards you, pubic bone tips to the chest, it's, I have a ponytail, so I'm not allowing the free flow there. Uh, your head will also get tipped backwards too. Okay, so inhale, you spill the pelvis forward, the chin gets dragged down. As you tip your pelvic rocker backwards towards your back wall where your head is, your head also tips in that direction. You can look at your back wall if you want. Just try that three more times. So inhale, we tip forwards, letting the skull get rolled forwards. Exhale, we rock back. We don't have to force anything either. So if, let's say the head isn't moving too much, that's okay. You just keep working and chipping away um, depending on how stiff the spine is this morning. But over time, we're just trying to smooth out all those little tight spots, little restricted areas in that chain of movement. So let's do one more back and forth. And then let's, let's fit, actually finish in the arch position. So tip forwards, because that's probably the position we're not in during the day. Well, that's debatable, but yeah. So we're tipping forwards. We're lift, the chest is lifting, the chin's getting dragged down. Now from here, it's like think of winding up one of those spring toys. So you wound yourself up. And then if you just relax, you just plop back down to where your natural start position. And that may have shifted from when we originally started. All right, second one, same idea that we'll start with the shoulders this time. So if you, uh, your arms resting on the floor, palms up, roll your shoulders even more backwards. So basically your pinky fingers have to lift off the floor, your biceps spin out, hopefully this makes sense. Uh, the chest will lift and the shoulder blades, if you really, really roll your biceps, or your arms outwards in their sockets, the shoulder blades will pinch. You feel your chin getting dragged down and your pelvis tipping forwards. Then release that, just plop back to neutral, roll your palms down. That's a pretty mild version, but we'll make it bigger. So keep rolling your arms in, you'll have to go onto your thumb tips so your pinkies are way rolled up in the air, shoulders roll forwards. And if you really go for that, you feel a huge stretch at the back of the shoulder blades, your chin gets thrust backwards probably, and your lower back will end up on the mat because your pelvis has to pelvic tilt. So just work with the shoulders this time. Same thing, it's still a spinal cog, but everything is connected. So if you roll your shoulders open, chest lifts, chin gets dragged down, arch the low back, exhale, reverse. You've got your Quasimodo posture, roll the shoulders and chin back, computer posture basically tuck the hips, but it's exaggerated. So if we can't, we need to work on the end ranges here. So that would be, so we can find ultimately the center of these, uh, the center of the joints eventually. So, but if we're stuck in the middle all the time then we're pretty much trapped there. So we wanna make sure we're never trapped. We have possibilities available to us. So we'll do one more each direction. Exhale for the crunched posture. <laughs> Let's finish on the inhale posture. So we're opening the chest, we're pushing the ribs up, we're tipping the tailbone down, we're really, and don't, the shoulders really, really don't be afraid to go big with this. Squeeze your shoulder blades back there, let your chin get pulled down. And then from there, we'll just, so we wind up, we wound up all our springs and then we just flop into neutral. And once you're neutral, you can open the arms to the side and just do a few easy head rotations. Just turn your head easily side to side, nothing fancy here. Okay, let's slide the left leg long, pull your right knee towards you. If you have a long enough left arm, you can grab your right knee with your left hand. If that's, okay, I'll show, we'll, we'll do one leg circle. It's a very, very old pre Pilates exercise. You can also hold with the right hand. It was taught to me with the left hand though by a second generation teacher, if anyone, so not that it really matters. So she probably had a long arm, but I'm just gonna use my left arm because I also have a long arm. But just circle that right knee around. And I like this one because you're limited by how long your arm is. So if it's too short though, obviously switch hands, but so we're not, and really relax the shin. So this is just training the get, getting purely into the socket. We're not, not about muscles, just about the bones. 
seems a very innocuous this one, but you'll see when we're done, let's switch directions. So make sure it's as big as you can get away with given the constraints we put on this. So we can only go as big as our arm allows and the hip allows, but do try to make it as big as you can. So you cross your midline, the pelvis stays reasonably steady, cross the midline, you open it out, two more. So easy, this one, so simple, but let's see how, let's do the compare and contrast. So pull the knee back into center, put that foot on the floor. So you, you can either just bend both knees for a second, just to compare the right side to the left side. I definitely feel that hip has dropped a bit, quite a bit. Um, and, or you can do straight legs, which is a bit tricky because sometimes when we have the legs straight, if we're very tight in our hip flexors, we may be pulled into a arch an arch position, but maybe that's maybe it's still helpful to, to test it. I, I still feel that same drop in the hip even, even when my legs are straight. So that's good. Let's try the other side. We'll just pull the left knee in now right hand on or if that works for you but feel free to switch right hand on kneecap and just do a nice slow but reasonably large circumference circle just try to relax through it so there's no tension there's nothing really to do except release the the uh the head of our femur bone think of a round billiard ball dropping into a uh a, a soft uh, i say a socket a pool table whatever those are called pocket <laughs> big deep pocket it's probably not the right word, but you know what I mean. So just do a few more. If there's any kind of pinchy feelings, just don't push it, but just go a little slower through there. And then we can reverse, but don't avoid it either. So just try to ease, try to make it comfortable, but not avoiding entirely. So out of direction, if you haven't switched, let just feel gravity making your life easier here. And then we'll finish, find the center. Put that foot down. Let's start with the bent knee test. So bend both knees, see how things are feeling. And if that's okay, feels pretty good to me. I feel like I'm pretty even now. You can stretch both legs long if that's useful to you. Okay, and then let's let's leave the legs slow. Let's actually bend both knees. Grab, um, let's grab a yoga block for this one. Or a book. I think everyone here has a block. Uh, we're going to do a, a hip test. So pull your uh, internal external rotation test. So you just pull your right knee to the tabletop roughly and just jam that yoga block between your palm and your thigh, close to the knee. Yeah, it's just it's just easier than just the little, especially if you have a shorter arm, it's a bit easier. Not that you, you may not need the block, but it's kind of nice to have it. So we push into the block, we light very lightly, just a tiny bit, find neutral pelvis. So try not to tuck the hips. Flex your right foot. And all we're going to do is swing this right shin. If your left leg in the air, you can always do this with a straight leg. Maybe let's do it with a straight leg, actually. So you can kick the shin across to the left, kick your right shin across to the right. But we're not moving that this thigh that the yoga block is on. It's only the it's the shin moving, but ultimately it's the hip socket or the the, the femur bone moving on the inside, not the outside. So in and out a few more times. And what we're particularly interested in here is how much internal rotation we have. So when you kick outwards, how far does that shin go out to the right? You might want to eyeball that. And then we'll see if we can improve this range in a second. So let's finish kicking that right leg out to the right, just hold it. And what we're gonna do is now push into the block a little harder, push your head into the block, a little isometric contraction, keep the waist long on the right side and then bring come back to parallel, let's relax. Now before we do the other side, just put the block down. This one, you've done this exercise before, but it's actually supposed to help the right hip. So we'll just do it three times. So arms out to the side, both legs straight, pull your left knee in. So it, it's that rotation exercise that we do, but it's actually, I never mentioned this before, it's actually also to help the right hip. So we'll flex the right leg. You wanna keep the right leg very actively, straight and pressed down. How far can we move that left leg and tabletop across to the right without lifting the left hip? So that's our first priority. Okay, priority number two, we're gonna move the left hip because we wanna go further, but we're not gonna move the left shoulder or the right leg. So how much range, how, how far can we teeter over here without moving? When I say not moving the right leg, I mean not letting it roll to the right. So you have to really push into the mat with your right leg. It's not awful, it's, it's quite, I like this one because it's not, it's, it's, it's increasing the range of motion in a rather pleasant way actually, but there's a little bit of work. <laughs> okay, so you go as far as you can without moving your right leg. And now you can only go so far. When you can't go any further, now let the right leg spin outwards. So now you're on the edge of the right foot. Your left knee may be approaching the floor without letting your left shoulder come up. And when you just can't go anymore, yes, we will let that left arm come up. And then you get the floppy part. You just sort of fall over to the right. And then once you're down, reach the left arm up. Now just go as far as you can with the left arm without collapsing your shoulder blade, of course. Now, uh, so just note where that is. Now you're gonna lift your left knee and left, 
uh, what is that, or left foot, I <laughs> can't think right now, don't, uh, and see how far you can come before the right leg has to start to turn back to center, and then the arm can come back. Let's do two more of those, we'll go a little quicker. So our main priority is don't move your right leg as long as you can. So left leg reaches across, don't move the hips. Now move your hip, don't move the right leg, don't move the right leg, don't move the right leg as long as you can. And we just can't go any further. Then you spin everything across, don't worry about it anymore. And then we come, and we're just gonna come back in a more relaxed way, arm leading the way, leg follows, and we'll do one more. So really work the going down part. So you go across to the right, then you lift your hip when you need to. Now for some people, it is possible to get the knee to the floor without letting the left shoulder or the right leg move. I'm not in that territory, <laughs> maybe one day, but we try. So we're trying, oh, I'm turning my leg too soon, but here we go. And then the leg turns when it needs to. And when you're all done that project, we'll just roll back with the arm, the knee. Now, come back to the middle of your mats when you're all done. Let's retest that leg. So you can bring your yoga block up to your right shin, or right, not your shin, sorry, your right leg. Uh, flex that right foot, left leg long again, and just kick the shin in uh, to the left will be not really the test, but kick it to the right a few times and just see if you have any more range of motion there. I think that actually worked for me a little bit. Not a huge amount, but it's a little better. So just do a couple more of those. And if not, if it didn't get any better, that's okay. <laughs> Maybe we, we got a good stretch though, so that's good too. All right, other side. So let's do the test, other left knee. So left knee in, you can just press your block. You can use one hand or two hands, doesn't matter, I suppose. So flex the foot and just kick in like a windshield wiper kick out. So just see what you got there. And I'll show you. I'm gonna do it here so you can see. Yeah, let me just look at you guys. So yeah, keeping that foot, if you keep the foot flexed, it's a little easier to manage it because sometimes we'll unconsciously turn the foot out and that's kind of doing a little extra thing there that's interfering with the test. So keep your foot straight up and down. Okay, so finish with the kick out position without hiking your hip so that the hip height hiked up, just manage that. Now we push, you might want to use two hands with this, push into the block with your hands in your thigh for five, just breathing, four, make sure you're not raising your blood pressure, three, two, one. All right, now let's improve that range. So slide the left leg long, move the block aside, right knee tabletop, little bit of activity to that left leg because that's the leg we're working on. So you're pushing your back knee to the floor as close as it can get. So let's see what we've got here. So right leg moves to the left, that's adduction of the right hip or the left hip and the right hip actually. Then we move the right hip off the floor slowly, but we're trying not to move the left kneecap or the left leg. So if you notice your knee starting to turn to the left, that means you've lost it, but that's okay. Well, you may have to lose it. It just depends on how much range you have. When you just can't go anymore, let that leg turn, let the knee turn on the left leg. And then you just come over into that nice twist. You can come out of it with the reach, get your airplane arm, get a good chest opener. You drag the back of your leg over with your core and you come back. And we do that two more times. So independent movement, just the, left, uh, just the right leg, then the pelvis directing the leg further without moving the left leg. And then how far can we go with before we have to just lose it and tip right over. <laughs> and we turn with that arm, resist with the hip. There's always that little bit of a delay. So it's the delays that give us the, the good results. So how long can we delay not moving the pelvis when we move the leg? How long can we delay moving the left leg while we move the pelvis? And we get a good spinal twist for that matter in a chest stretch. And then eventually, of course, unless you're very, very, I was looking at a photo with this famous runner. I wish I could remember his name, but he could just do this with the knee on the floor and the chest square. It was amazing to see. I should find that photo for you guys. And then we rock back. I think that was three. Let's do the retest. Grab your block, left leg up, right leg long. So just, you don't have to push hard, just like, just basically touch the block with one or two hands and just kick out, see what you've got, see if it's, oh, mine actually did get a little better too. No miracles, but it is a bit better. I hope, I hope you have a little more range too. Even every degree counts. All right. Okay. And then let's just, so since we're here, let's grab the yoga block with the left hand again. No, we will put it against the right leg this time. Uh, right knee, right leg, well, not the knee, the leg. Uh, so push your left palm into that block and the right knee. So it's another isometric. We'll be in parallel this time. Left leg tabletop, let's do a dead bug, right arm up in the air. If your chin is thrusting backwards, you might need a small pad under your head. Okay, so just, or a cushion. We're relative, we're, let's say neutral in quotation. So if you could bounce a cup of tea on your pubic bone, that's the idea, but the ribs are what counts. So keeping the front ribs down. Okay, so here we go. We're just pushing, pushing. Now we take the left leg, we slide it out, the right arm scissors back, we inhale, return. Strong exercise. So exhale out, inhale in. Four more. 
three, make sure that you're, you're obviously your core is working, but you don't wanna be holding your breath or puffing up your face. Not that I was doing that, but just make sure I was teaching the other day in a, in a live class and someone was doing that. And I realized there was all this pressure building up and you don't want pressure, you wanna get rid of the pressure. You're still, you're still working for sure. Actually you're working better if you don't build pressure. Last one. And now let's put that left foot down, right foot down. Before we do the other side, let's do five pelvic lifts into the bridge or forward pelvic shift. So feet are planted, pull your pelvis, like, like your feet are like Velcro pulling you off the floor forward and up. We're not articulating, we're just going up in a hip pinch and then we melt the pelvis and ribs down. So four more of those, pull yourself forward and up. We're just getting a stretch to the quadriceps a little bit. Inhale, sit down. So press up, pull yourself up, melt yourself down. Pull yourself forward, shins going a little bit forward towards the toes, knees over second toes. Last two. Last one. Good. Once we land, block again. Let's do the block project, core project. So right hand on left uh, leg, block pushing, right palm pushing. Make sure the right shoulder blade is and shoulder blade are relaxed. Right knee comes up, left arm comes up. You know, you know what to do. Push, push, 30% is all you need there with the pressure. And then here we go. So exhale out, inhale. And how low you want to go with that right leg is purely dependent on your ability to not lose your rib cage. So if you feel pressure in your neck, you might have the leg a little too low, but you can play with it. So exhale out, inhale back. I just go about halfway down. That's good enough for me. Let me take a look at you guys. Push out. And you're keeping that nice straight line that looks good, nice flexed foot. Might as well work on our dorsiflexion because we don't do that most of the day. That's two. Last one. And let's put the foot down. Other foot down. All right. So what we're going to do is put the right foot on our block now and do another set of bridges. Just a nice kind of warm up for bridge. So the right foot's on the block, or well, I think everyone here is a yoga block, right? Left foot's on the floor. So this, this is biasing the right. The right hip's a little higher. So for it to be, well, you'll see, you know where this is heading. So the, the right knee is higher than the left knee, but the pelvis should still be squared off. So you don't want the right hip higher. Okay, so here we go. So just articulating bridge this time, roll your hips under without affecting the skull for this one. So this is a more controlled pelvic tilt. So you roll yourself up into the air. You might wanna put your fingertips on your hip bones, make sure the pelvic bones are level, despite the fact that the right leg is higher in the air. That means the left glute has to work a little, left glute and hamstring has to work a tiny bit harder to maintain this even pelvis. Breathe in at the top and we just roll the spine down. Simple, but it's a nice, little exercise. So let's do three more. Roll the hips up, heavy through the heels. Got a good rib position there. Looks good. And roll your way down. So let's do two more of those. I'm just going to brighten my screen here so I can see you better. There we go. Looks good. Now the last one, we roll up. So just get your position really solid. So the, the solar plexus, usually the, the bottom ribs where that, that U shape of the rib cage, if it's up a little bit, like mine tends to be perpetually, you just drop it down a little bit away from the ceiling. Not losing your height though, it should not affect your hip height. Um, it just puts your core in a better position. Now let's put all the way into the yoga block slowly, like you're pushing on a, or turning on a dimmer switch to high now <laughs> from zero, from maybe 50% to 100%. Now we can lift the left knee in the air. We don't need the left leg at all. And we're gonna roll up and down six times. So exhale. On the rolling up phase. Inhale, roll down, or advice, doesn't matter. Just breathe, don't think too hard about it. Body will figure it out, doesn't matter. Hamstring project, hip extension project, good. Last one, we go up, put that left foot down. Now we're gonna transition the weight into the left foot, hold your right knee towards you. So now we're standing on the other leg, right heel pushes to the ceiling. So we're in a straightish leg, if not fully straight. Lower your right leg. See if you can touch your yoga block without arching your back and then kick it back up. We'll just do six of these. You don't have to, I'm not literally touching my block. Well, actually I am, but you don't have to, but that might be too low, but just to the point where you can just challenge your position just a little bit without losing your pelvis with this low leg position. And then let's bend the knee, put the foot on the block. Let's find that block. Where is it? There we go. And then just melt your spine down the usual way. Relax. All right, other side. So we'll slide the block to the left. I don't think we need to stretch because that sort of was your stretch right there. So we'll start, we'll do four rounds of just rolling up and down with two legs with the left hip and a little more hip flexion, but we're still even through the hips. So exhale, roll up, inhale at the top, roll down, rolling through, just waking up the back of our legs. 
And if we do, most of us do have the hip, one of our pelvic bones does tend to be a little bit forward anyway. So this is for, depending on which side it is, one of these versions we just did will be more useful to you than the other. But um, for me, this is probably not the best side to be working on. It would have been better, to, it's better for me to have my right foot on the yoga block to even myself out, but nonetheless, it's good to do both sides. So asymmetrical work. For the last one, up we go, we stay up, level your hips, get your ribs in a good position, all the way into the yoga block. And then we can hold that right knee towards us. Let's roll up and down, eight. And I would just roll down, I didn't say this on the other side, but just to the waistband of your pants, just to keep a little bit of a curled under pelvis. Because if we go right down to neutral, it's just kind of a hassle to keep rolling. So you just keep the scooped position and that's easier to find it. Make sure the left knee doesn't wander out to the baby toe side of your foot. Keep it in line with your big toe. And of course, we've probably done more than eight. So let's finish at the top now. We'll put the right foot down, transition into the right leg, fold your left knee towards you, left heel to the sky, up and down eight more times. Left leg swings freely with a stable pelvis, stable ribs. Inhale for the kick if you want, exhale for the, the challenging part on the way down. Good, 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 everyone. Three, two looks excellent. One, kick up, bend the knee, put that foot down, find the block first, and roll down. All right, good job. So let's pull the knees in. We'll do a few nice big hip circles, knees in, and then feet out, knees open, big toes touch, kick the heels out, knees together. So open and close. Let your pelvis rock with this one a bit. You don't have to maintain this neutral business. So pelvis tips forward a bit, pelvis natural, just very natural, just let it be natural. You can reverse this, push out, pull in. Knees together, toes out, that's it, beautiful. Simple, I'm in a simple old school mood today. <laughs> no crazy new stuff, well maybe there will be a few things. All right, so let's finish this set, we'll just put the feet down. And just finish, we'll do one more core exercise, which will also give us a nice stretch. So we'll pull the right knee to our chest with the hands, push out through the left leg, working on your knee extension, flex the foot, for, the left foot anyway, flex it for now, we'll change this in a second. So just because it's easier to get uh, knee extension, we can fold our forehead towards the right knee and let's point all our toes now, including that left foot, stretch the right leg, walk up it so climbing a tree and kind of wiggle your ribs out from underneath you so you get a good rib mobility exercise too once you find your spot we'll switch legs we'll go for eight and switch and if your neck gets tired no point in straining it just hold your head with the left hand five four pull three two one and then we'll finish with the left leg up right leg down let's relax fold the left knee in for a second just do nothing for a second, push out through the right heel, try to get that knee extended again. Especially if you have to sit a lot during the day, the knee starts to forget how to straighten. Okay, and we'll do one more round. So fold the knee, or the knee, the, the head towards the knee. I guess you could say knee towards head. Stretch the leg, point your right leg, and here we go. For the same thing, but let's do it in flex feet this time, actually, for eight, seven, six, curl up a little higher if you want. Oh, there's a cat. Uh oh, he's scared. The plumbers must be here. We have plumbers coming. Uh oh, I'm going to. Shut this door because he's going to do something. And it's safer in here with me. All right, and then we'll bend the knees. Let's rest the head. Totally relax, do a few neck rotations. Then bring the head to center, bring your inner thighs together, inner ankles, do a few knee hip rotations. Knees tip one way with the legs glued together and then the other. So knees together. Keep them together for this one. To just, just, I mean, you could do it the other way too. Um, Ankle staff, just keep it a little more tight. So working your core a bit more that way. Less hippie, but more core. <laughs> okay, and then we roll over to one side and let's come on up to standing finally. Okay, my cat is very scared. I'm gonna have to, um, he's trying to get into the closet. Oh no, it's okay, it's okay. No one's gonna get you up here. <laughs> All right, well, I'll have to deal with this after. So we'll stand up. Um, let's, when I was going to the bathroom to hide. Okay. <laughs> so it's just going to be some disturbances. All right, I don't know where the other cat is, but okay. So let's do. We'll do um a hip, a hip, <laughs> hip circle standing. So grab something to hang on to. Could be um a wall, whatever chair, foam roller. If you have it in the middle of the room, I'm just going to use this if I need. You may not need anything, but so let's stand on the right foot, and let's do this again that we practice lying down. So just picking your knee up. Obviously harder standing. Flex the foot. So we'll do this. 
um, kicking inwards the way we did on our hip test earlier, and then kicking outwards is the thing we were practicing earlier. So we'll just do about eight of these. We can just flick the shin in and out a few times, eight times. And we'll try for this one, we'll be a little nitpicky, try to keep the hips even. Okay, now pause there, bring your foot behind you, knees side by side if your quads allow that, if they have, if the knee has to be a little bit in front, that's totally okay, let me face this way, so. Okay, and you're gonna kick your shin with your core strong in and out, in and out. Same, same idea, just now we're in hip extension. Ooh. And just keep doing that a few more times. Oops, I'm just gonna clear a spot in the closet for this cat. I'm totally crazy, sorry guys. And then you can come on down. Shake that leg out and then we'll, we'll go to the other side. All right, oh, it's not used to having other humans in the house. So other knee pulls up, we'll do the flexion with the internal and external rotation. Project, keep the foot parallel. Yeah, so watch, we don't have, no one's doing this, I don't think, but just watch for the tramp. As you can see, it actually changes the hip angle. So it's just keep the foot flexed, pulled up. Okay, and when you've done about 10 of those, knee be uh, foot behind you, knees relatively side by side. Oh, don't fall over like I just did. And same thing. Now this one's tricky if we have tight quads, which probably a lot of us do, I certainly do. So keeping the ribs stack, I have to actually work a little bit in this position to keep the body from popping forwards. A couple more of those. Good stability exercise too for the other leg. All right, put that down. Now, you might, you can use, if you have a wall handy or a piece of furniture that you can get your heel up against, like I can use this reformer. You don't have to, you could just be on the ball of your left foot. So if you bend both knees, I'll show you what it looks like from the side. So you're gonna be about this, this kind of angle. Uh, your, uh, it's my left leg, you'll be your right knee forwards. Um, so something like this, and then your back heel, it's nice if it's against the wall, it just, it just holds things in a bit better. I'll, but I don't know if everyone has the access to that or a couch that has a low hang on it. Okay, so. So you're, you're upright, you're standing, you just happen to have the knees a little bit bent. Okay, I think everyone's good there. Uh, and you're staggered, right? The right knee is in front. So put your hands on your hips. You're going to fold your body forwards, but bring your left hip in towards your right inner thigh. So there's a turning inwards to that right leg. Now try to angle, your, your knee will go, it's gonna be angled towards your big toe, I would say, and you're pulling your right hip back to the wall behind you. Now to get out of this one, we press the pelvis upright. We bring our body upright like we're leaning against the wall, but we're still bent in the knees. And then we turn away from the front leg without letting this knee move. So I'm keeping my front knee uh, bent. I'm rolling my ankle. I can see that because of my big toe issue there, but try not to roll your ankle. And then you bring your left, left uh, hip inwards, pull your right hip backwards. You get a nice stretch in the glute there. That looks good, guys. And then you turn, yeah, that's good. And then you turn the other way. And the thing about this direction is interesting. It's probably easier for most of us, but it is tempting to move that knee. So to make sure the knee stays steady. It's, it takes a little bit of thought, this one. And then we do two more. So you turn into yourself. In, this is internal hip rotation where it's a sneaky way to get there. It's like the one where you're kicking your shin outwards. And then we, but we're moving it from the pelvis rather than moving the leg. We're moving the pelvis around the still leg. So let's do one more. Inhale, we roll inwards. That hip pulls back, you're keeping your foot on the floor for stability, because I'd rather get, I'd rather just get the stretch and the effect we're looking for deep into the hip crease. And we turn out. Good, 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 good. All right. <laughs> okay, so we'll shake that leg out. We'll do the other side. Hopefully that was good. Did you feel that back here in the, the glute kind of getting some length? Okay, good, good. It's a good one. So you've got the staggered stance, not too big. You want to be like this. So just just your knees are, yeah, your knees will be side by side, actually. Your foot, your other foot's behind you, though. Knees will be side by side, more or less. Maybe the left one's a little further, tiny bit, tiny bit. Okay, so just bend the knee as much as it's going to bend comfortably. Bring your right hip that you have your hands on inwards towards your inner thigh, but don't let the knee go with, because if everything goes to your left, you're not changing anything, right? So you have to only move the right half of your body while your left side stays still. That's the secret. So your knee actually has to move inwards a bit or maintain its position. Same thing when you open outwards, as you come upright, don't let the knee go with you, keep the knee still. So the knee's still like a laser beam pointing over your big toenail. And you just keep the knee still at both directions. To keep it still, you almost have to think of it doing the opposite. Turning in, press the hip upright, turning out, turning in, pull that hip back. So the pelvis is angling in that direction. Actually, that looks, that looks good. Upright. So we go into hip flexion and internal rotation on the downward phase. 
and we go into hip, well, almost hip extension, not quite, because the knee's still bent, and we turn into a, a turnout position. So let's do two more. You might get it. I don't know if anyone, I, I didn't get a crack on my hips this morning, but sometimes I get these huge, <laughs> huge popping sounds. So don't be alarmed if that happens. All right, when you've done about six to eight of those, come on up to finish. Now we're going to do a more of a strengthening idea using that internal hip rotation. So I would grab a, probably your yoga block would be a good to toy with this, um, just for so we don't fall over. So I'm going to grab this little pointy thing. Um, so grab your block and uh, we'll stand. Let's see, what leg were we just standing on that leg? Yeah, so we'll stand on the, can't remember what leg we started. Yeah, let's stand on your right leg first. The other foot, you can have just your big toe on the floor, or if you want to get fancy, since we're, we have the block, actually, let's make it a little harder. So bend your right knee, let, let the weight travel into the midfoot of your foot. So we're not, we don't want to be it back in our heel like this. You want to go forwards. So the shin angle is, it's more than 90 degrees. So you got the block in the opposite hand, the left hand, you're going to hip, hip, hips pull backwards. It's like a, we've got our magic wand here, the block is, and you're just going to Swing that block across. You're going to touch the floor somewhere to the right of you. Pull your right hip backwards. And then we, to get out of this one, we just press up, tall spine, the hips press forward. So we won't go the other direction though with this one. We'll just keep going inwards, touch the ground. Now, if this is too easy with the long block, my block's extra long actually. So it's, 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 all, it's almost, so you can always hold it the other way if you want more challenge. So you can always go for the lower end of the block. So your glutes have to work a little more. They have, they need more length. It's not just a strength issue. This is length. We're putting length back into what's, what's a tissue that's quite tight, to be honest. Most of us are very tight back there. So if all we do is, you know, clamshells and whatnot, this kind of standard stuff, you'll get a very tight butt, but not in a good way. So you'll end up getting like sciatica or whatever. So that's not good either. So we just come up and down two more times. We put length into the tissue as we strengthen it. How's that going for everyone out there? That looks good. Press up. One more, we'll make it, make it work. Cause I've been really nice to you today so far, so. <laughs> good, all right, I think that was good. Very effective, that one. All right, so other side. So just get your base. So we've gone through this, you don't have to go through it today, but you can heel strike and then you're into the midfoot, the knees over the second big toe. Uh, we hold the with the opposite hand, you can lift the back foot and we just reach across. Make sure the knee doesn't turn up, the knee stays over the big toe. And then you, the key to coming out of this one is not to let the knee bend, uh, keep, sorry, keep the knee bent because if we're quad dominant, it'll want to pull us up like, like, uh, like we're straightening the leg. So by forcing the knee to stay bent, you're coming out of your quad dominance and retraining a new area, which is a good thing, I would say, for all, most of us. It's natural to be quad dominant. Path of least resistance, but not necessarily the best path. So just do four more, looks good. So inhaling down. And you can play with where exactly you're touching too. Maybe try a slightly different spot just to challenge yourself a little bit. So it's not always the same. So that hip has to really open. And one side may be harder because you may have more tension on one side. So let's finish that off. Maybe one more. I think that was the right, right number because we're all fatiguing it. <laughs> all right, so good. Shake those legs out. Let's go to the end of our mats and put your blocks down. We'll do, uh, let's do a downward dog set. Um, good, you can go to the back of the mat. We'll just do a nice easy roll down to the floor, fingers and, and then hands on the floor. Let's walk the hands out, little steps. Let's go for the big dog here, <laughs> fairly big. Most likely everyone's heels, unless you have very flexible ankles, probably our heels will be off the floor. So just let gravity be your friend here. If you push into the mat, it's not really the best thing because you'll end up having your shoulders in your ears. So if you stop pushing and just relax, it's actually easier now and better. So as we prepare for plank, we'll simply exhale, bring the face, the chest forward, Find your position. I'm going to bring my feet a little closer to my feet. There we go. Inhale and then, or sorry, let's inhale as we go upside down into the downward dog. Let your heels relax. Exhale, we come forwards. Inhale, press back. Now, if you want a little extra, as you go backwards, actually, let, let's, as you go backwards, let's bring the feet in. I, I'm going to suggest a tiny bit further forward. It depends, but try a tiny bit forward. 
If your shoulders are okay holding with one hand, put all the weight slowly into your left palm. Take your right hand, touch your right ankle. Uh, sorry, your left ankle, my, my apologies, your left ankle. And then we come back into a plank if you're still in a good spot for that. You may have to finagle this a little bit with your own body proportions. And then you push back, find your down dog. If it's okay, you reach with the left hand, touch the opposite angle. And then you can pick up the speed. So your choice, you can go super slow like that. I would go slowly if I have a shoulder issue. Um, and, but you still want to do the unilateral work. Just go slower because it takes time for these muscles to fire up, especially if they've been traumatized by something. <laughs> but if not, go whatever speed appeals. Make sure you're not slipping on your mat. I don't think we're sweating today. It's not so hot. So just do a couple more. Good. And when you're done, plank, knees down, shell stretch, take a breather. Okay, so from there, we'll just simply lift the hips. We're going to stay down on our elbows and forearms, but we'll just be in the, and you can bring your elbows a little bit ahead. So like quadruped, we just happen to have the elbows under the shoulders, palms present up. This is the easiest forearm rotation exercise you'll ever do. So all you're going to do is turn, so I can just turn my hands independently of my, it's not totally independently, but without rolling my body, but let's roll the body a bit. So if you just turn your left, your left palm down, so you're rolling over the bones. It'll push you a little bit to the, to the right, just ever so slightly. You don't have to exaggerate it. And then switch. So both thumbs to the left, both thumbs to the right. And if you just don't interfere with it, you'll find yourself slightly swaying. That's a little different than us just flipping and lifting, um, which it has its uses too, but this is just a nice to get some movement into the spine and the shoulder joints and the hips. So just do about four more of those. Simple, but it's a nice little... Especially if we're on a keyboard a lot, these tissues can get really gummed up. And now we're gonna do an elbow, um, an elbow exercise, which is also good for shoulders and even the spine. So what, what we'll do for this one is bring both forearms out. Um, you can start with your palms down for this. Bring the elbows, if you can, a little bit ahead of your shoulders, if, if you can, and then just pull your hips back. But you've gotta be able to, and we're all gonna be different, just wherever we can maintain a parallel position. So I'm already losing. If I go back this far, you can see my elbows start to swing out. So that's too far for my current range of motion. So that's about it for me. So find that and then put your right hand behind your left elbow so it doesn't move. So you might be getting a bit of a lat stretch. So let's keep the left palm down and just try to bend, well don't try, we'll bend our elbow. So we're doing an elbow flexion exercise. So squeeze your elbow joints. So you're bringing your fingers, palms facing forward for now towards your shoulder. Now, while you're there, just turn your palm to face your shoulder, and then we press the back of the arm down. So now the palm presents up. Once the hand touches, turn the palm down, squeeze the elbow up, turn the palm around, squeeze it down. Harder than it looks, at least for me. So palm down to go up, palm presents up as we come down. So we'll do two more this direction. Oh, the hardest bicep curl ever. Now, next time we're up on that lovely curl, keep the palm facing forward, press down, turn the palm up down there. So we come up with the palm presenting up. So we'll be facing the back wall. So palm down to squeeze down, palm up to squeeze up and just do three more of those. My shoulder is really firing here. Ooh. But in, it's in an open position. Let me just look and see if I can see you guys doing this one. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah. So if you notice your shoulders starting to hike up then you know that you've blasted past your actual range of motion. Let's rest. So we'll just shift into a puppy stretch for a second and then we'll ease into sh uh, shell stretch or, or uh, child's pose. And from child's pose, take your left hand, thread it under to the right. And you don't have to be in, in child's pose. You could be a little higher if, you, if your hips prefer that. We'll just give that shoulder a bit of a stretch out. Okay, and then we'll come up. Let's do side number two. So stack yourself up first. Then wiggle your elbows forward as much as, you know, maybe a few centimeters. Then you can pull the hips back. That's another way to do it. Then, uh, then just take your left hand sort of, it's just resting behind that elbow so it doesn't slide around. Try to line up your third finger with that elbow. Find your range of motion. Let's start with the palm facing down, squeeze up. Palm faces back, squeeze down. So we'll do six of these. Palm flat to lift, palm up on the descent. I really try to squeeze the elbow joint maximally because this is it's a, it's a joint we often neglect. It's like the knee, it's stuck in between the hand and the shoulder, the way the knee's stuck between the hip and the ankle. So next time we're down with that, I, now that I was talking, I lost my train of thought, but I think we're going palm up to squeeze up, palm down to come down. If I'm incorrect, just 
continue as <laughs> you need to. So palm up to squeeze, palm down to come down. We'll try to keep the hips even, try not to veer to the right. Three more. And last one. All right, stretch the arm, put the other arm out, just gentle puppy stretch, ease into your shell stretch, right arm threads the needle, reach the left arm forward if this is a good position for you. Otherwise you'll be more up here, in which case you probably don't want your hand out there, you'd be more hand beside the face. Okay, so from here, we're gonna come up a little bit. We're gonna open the knees, just so it's a little more comfortable. Uh, we're going to rest the, or you can put your right hand on the floor just to sort of prop you up. I'm bending forward just a little bit. If this is bothering you, you can always put a cushion under here. You could do it up here too. I'll just show, I'll show, I'll get started so you can make your decisions. So we'll be in this position, the salute, rotations, thoracic rotation, finally. Okay, so we're just going to rotate inwards to the, the uh, whatever that is, wrist. <laughs> Square yourself off, turning backwards. It's nothing to do with that elbow up there. Try not to squeeze or do anything extra. It's just coming from your trunk, from your core. So we rotate downwards and in, and then upwards and out. So let's do three more. Exhale for the, exhale for the downwards turn. Inhale for the upward turn. Yeah, looks good. Now the final one. We'll stay in that back turn. So we're turning to the right. Make sure your pelvis, is, I think everyone's okay sitting on their heels. It's a little easier there. You're less likely to arch your back. So the ribs are tucked in. Um, you're sitting comfortably on your heels. Just swing that arm out. Pinky slides out. Then our thumb will spin down, maybe just a little bit more to plant the, bend the elbow, plant the back of your hand on your back somewhere. And then bring, hover the hand off your back, squeeze the pinky up as high as it will go. Spin your thumb around the normal way. Come back to your, to your salute. And then we'll retrace our steps and we'll just switch sides. You can put the right hand on the floor. Make sure you're centered. There's no translation of the ribs. I'm just talking to myself more than anyone out there. So we do six of these, just the plain rotations. Inhale for the opening phase. Exhale for the downward phase. That's it. Tempting to move the elbow, but we're really just moving. It's like we don't have an arm. We're just moving the chest. We're all doing that, just, just saying it a different way. It's a waist exercise too. You know, it wasn't really intended to be that, but that's really what's turning us, isn't it? Core exercise. Now, as we turn out to that back diagonal, hold. Make sure the neck isn't over-rotating. Squeeze that arm up, you got it. Thumb down, bend the elbow. So it's on your low back, you're in internal shoulder rotation. Hover the hands, squeeze back up, turn it. Back to the salute. And then we're gonna come down into a child's pose-like position again, but we're gonna walk our uh, elbows out, forearms parallel, walk the knees out. We're being a small plank. Knees down for now. Just a good excuse to uh, get some core work in a different way. So you're pushing through the forearms, should be pretty warmed up now. If you feel like your shoulders do tend to roll, you, have, you don't have to have your palms down. You could be in a fist, you could be thumbs up. They're, You'd even be palms up, but they're all, all good options. Maybe I'll do fists. So the thing about this one, it's a good place to practice breathing. So if, you, if you're inhaling, presumably your core is quite engaged, so you shouldn't be belly breathing. That would be a bad, because then you're going to arch and sag, right? So you're just breathing and you're pushing the mat away. You're feeling a nice stretch on the inhale through, your, through the muscles of your ribs. Not that we're sagging by any means. Exhale. It's the sagginess that actually causes compression. It's the being strong that keeps you in a more expansive position. Let me just take a peek. I can't see you 100% for that. It looks pretty good. So last breath in and out. Now we're going to, you may have to bring your knees back a bit, but we're going to rest on in the, in the sphinx. I'm going to bring my elbows forward a bit because of my body proportions and back. So be comfortable. Okay. So with this one, we're going to go back and forth between kind of a cat stretch and, and a plant. Um, so we're in the, the extended cat, so the, the friendly cat position in a sense, in a sense here. So we're pulling the breastbone forward. We're not resting 100%. We're pulling the sternum up. We're pulling our shoulder blades down. We're not squeezing them though. They're just sliding down. From here, we, we go back to the plank, but we'll make it a little exaggerated. We'll round into the plank. So tuck, tuck your hips under, press your ribs up, dip your chin on this one. It's not really a plank, but it's, we're exaggerating that round position. Inhale into that position. Check that both sides of your hips are turning under equally. Let's go back on the Next, inhale into the sphinx, pulling. Exhale, pushing. 
push, 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 push. Keep the tailbone on. So the tendency would be to stick our bum in the air, but keep it curled under. And then three more. So inhale for the sphinx, pull, pull yourself or get some upper back strength happening. Push to round and stretch the upper back. So now the front muscles are working, the core is working. A bit of a hamstring to tuck under. Let's do one more. And with this final one, find the curl, find the C curve. Now, can we keep that and find an actual plank? So pull the head like a turtle head coming out of the shell that the head lengthens out. Good. And then from there, just move your hips back so we can get out of this. <laughs> and we'll go into yet another child's pose. Both arms long in front. Spread your palms. Open that up. All right. So. I did want to do one thing and then another thing in this position. So let's bring the, uh, let me think about this. Well, I'll, I'll face you. So we're gonna bring the left elbow out in front of us. And it's going to be your fingers, your thumb will be behind your ear. Your fingers are somewhere on your side head. Can everyone see? I'll go this way so you can see me better. I said left elbow, but I'm doing my right because as usual, I'm mirroring, I was mirroring you, but if, just pretend it's my left elbow. So you're reaching out, okay. Now, if you're looking at the floor here, this elbow is in, in track with this shoulder and your wrist. So it's in a straight line. So it's like a streetcar track here. So we're gonna reach this elbow forward through, and the streetcar track is now going in the air. So you're gonna inhale, you're gonna look up a little bit. You're getting some upper back work and then bring the elbow down. You know, I'm gonna change this a little bit because I was experimenting before the class and I forgot what I did there. Put your fingers on your neck, same position, but you can feel the, where your skull meets your neck. So if you jam your chin, if you thrust your chin forward, you can see how that increases that wrinkle there, right in the neck. That's too much neck flexion. We don't want that much flexion. So look down again, that the wrinkle decreases. So it's gonna be a little bit of one because we have a natural curve there. So when you start to do this again, reach the elbow forward, you wanna feel your upper back lifting your face forward. Now you're, you're, you can look up a little bit. You're, there will be an increase in that little indent there, but not excessive. So you want a nice mild, bit of extension through, especially through the upper back. So less neck, more upper back, bring the elbow down. I'm, you're gonna do two more. You should feel it in a nice way. It's really hard to cheat in this one because what we're, does that make sense? Let me just see. So the illness, unless, it's, unless you are really tied to your shoulders. Yeah, I think we're good. And the elbow is staying straight, going forwards. And you'll realize how hard it is to actually do a swan or a cobra if you do it with <laughs> proper shoulder mechanics. All right, we'll come on down. Before we do the other side, just stretch out another plank, big plank, toes tucked under, just three breaths, inhaling through the nose, but just to give your hips a bit of a stretch. Now in this position, we're gonna change it up a bit. So make sure your elbows are wide enough. So if you bend your left elbow, just point your fingers at your right elbow. So you've swiveled your forearm. I don't know if you can see in the mark. And then I'm gonna turn into the side plank, reaching up in the air. Yeah, this one, just make sure your elbows don't get stuck to the floor when you do that transition. And then we, Come on down, we put the right elbow down, we swing the left one open, and then we turn the right forearm, we turn the hips as a unit, we reach up, push into the mat with your arm, with your feet, and we'll do one more each side. Turning, find your center plank, do the arm change, use your feet, we're on the edges of our feet, that's it. Turn. Side wall, push, feet, side core lifting, come back to the front, we lower the knees. We'll find that sort of little child's posey position again. And this time, your left elbow, your excuse me, your right elbow will reach out. Fingers touching your neck. If that works, you don't have to do that. It's just a suggestion. Uh, knees are as close as you're comfortable. The reason, the closer, the better, because we're trying not to fake it with the low back flexibility that we have. Okay, and the other arm is just where? Where did I have it? I can't remember. Now. I think we were just here. So we're just going to reach the elbow forward. Your chest lifts a little bit off your thighs and you're looking ahead. You're just trying to find the upward rotation of your shoulder blade and the actual spinal extension. So keep going. I'm just gonna show you here if you, if you can't, you may not be able to see me, but that's because you're working. But basically it's this, this that we always do, but it's when you're on your stomach like this, it's so easy to just go right to the, my middle back is doing all the work, right? in my low back, to be honest. So when you're in this position, you can't fake it. You're forced to really find the upper back muscles and get the proper, it's very tiny and it's very intense when you get it. We'll just do a couple more of those. Reaching, looking, let the eyeballs follow. When you're going. Okay, and when you're all, or one more, or if you're all done, let's come on out of that. I'll give you a, a little breather here. 
enough child's pose for one day, I'd say. <laughs> and hopefully, did you feel that in the upper back in a nice way? Because it's kind of hard to cheat. Yeah, it's good. But it is a bit hard in the hip flexors. So let's do some stretching for that. So I'm going to say grab, if you want to do this on a yoga block, if you, or you can use your foam roller if it's squishy or any kind of cushion. It's just a little nicer. It's a bit easier to keep the hips even. Because I'll, I'll show you, if we have a hip hike, if I, if I have my right, my hip, if you can see from the line of my shirt, I'll exaggerate a bit, it would be naturally like this. I have to really struggle to get it down. I can do it, but I have to, but if we, if we don't, we don't want to worry about it. So we'll just pop maybe the right knee on the block. So it will be your left knee forward. And it's a bit, bit easier to keep the hips level. Maybe still not perfect. Maybe it is for you, but uh, you may not have this issue at all. But just for those of us that do, a lot of people have one hip a little higher. Okay, so we just do the basic pelvic tilt. We still keep the height up top. We're not just because we're tilting doesn't mean we're going to that scrunch position. Then we squeeze forward. So we start to find a tiny bit of a stretch or maybe not so tiny. But we're not pushing through the chest. So let's take the arms forward for a second. Like you're holding, you're presenting a box to someone, and that person that you're presenting this to is pushing backwards into you. So it kind of—I'll show you from the side. So our tendency would be to. Ooh, this is not a good block to do this on. <laughs> tendency is kind of go like this. So if someone's pushing at us, we're going to go backwards, but the hips are pressing forward. Okay, so pretty obvious. I've said it before, but I can never say it enough because it's not our natural tendency. Okay, so from here, we're going to turn the palms up. And then fingers pull down. You might want to bring this left foot out a bit for this one, actually. So keep the right hip squeezing. Big breath in. We're going to do a twist to your left. So inhaling. As we exhale, we'll keep the, the front leg still, but just turn your waist, your chest, and your hands and your head to the left. So we push out through the heels of the hands. We find the stretch, or we continue that stretch through the right hip, the right glute. A couple more breaths there. As you exhale, you might intensify the turn. Good. And then we'll ease on back. Great. Release the arms. Let's switch sides. Hopefully you can't hear the walls being smashed downstairs. <laughs> Someone in our bathroom. Our bathroom is collapsing into the neighbor's head downstairs. So that could be something. <laughs> All right. So we are here. So we tuck the hips, fiddle with it. Just make sure the hips are even. One side may be easier than the other. Very normal. Bring the hands out, push out through the heels of the hands as if you're pushing into a heavy door or someone's pushing on you. So the ribs are going backwards, but your hips are fighting to go forwards. Uh, make sure the hips are even for this one. Break breath in, getting ready to rotate. So here we go. Exhale, squeeze the hip, the glute forward, but we're turning. The hip isn't, it's pressing forward. So its job is to just maintain that stretch. We are adding that turn to intensify the stretch into the hips. So breathe in. Big inhale, let every inhale be a massage and expansion. Exhale, we can connect to the core a bit more, maybe squeeze out a little bit more rotation. Inhale, reframe it, push out through the heels of the hands. So you feel your shoulder blades wide against your back. Let's great, everyone. Turn a little more. We'll do three breaths, so one more. Keep working that hip forwards in a nice way. And come on back. And then you can release that. Let's take, um, let's take that away. You may, at this point, you're gonna grab something for your knees you can unless you have a cushion we're going to be lifting this knee up um i think i'm okay where i am actually but you may want to pad up your knees if you have a hard for some reason my knees seem uh more bulletproof these days than they did earlier than a few months ago so whatever reason used this mat used to bother me it doesn't seem to be bothering me so this is not a pretty looking exercise we're just going to be upright you've already opened up your hips a bit maybe sit back like you're sitting in a chair for a second and then squeeze the hips forward. Now, most likely, unless you've never sat in a chair, you'll have to squeeze your glutes just to be even neutral like this, which is totally fine. Okay, so what we're gonna do is open the arms a little bit to the side. This is just a balance thing. We're gonna try to lift this knee in the air, but let's be, we'll make this easier for you at first. So we'll just fake it a little bit. We'll just lean if you need to, but we'll just put, I have my big toe on the floor to help me balance. I, I don't wanna be leaning to the side like that. So just come back to center. So we have a little bit of a crutch, that's okay. Okay, now from here, we're going to, pick up the knee we're going to squeeze the heel a little closer and i'm falling over but i'm trying not to we're just going to maintain this knee up in the air it looks ridiculous because we're going to be rocking all over the place and we're just trying to keep keep on top of this hip so that it's going to want to go like this increase and flex because it's like it likes being like this we're like this on our computer so we're trying to stay up even if it looks silly and we're kind of bobbing all over the place trying to find our equilibrium we're just increasing our proprioception in this hip joint we'll just do a few more seconds as annoying as it is do this wobbly. Ooh. Also depends on what your knee's on. If you're on something squishy, it's harder. 
And then we put that knee down, relax for a second. Let's do a hip hinge. Find that hingey position. Nothing happening up top. We're just very relaxing the trunk. We squeeze the pelvis forward just to find just even neutral. Open the arms. Get your weight over there. You can start with your big toe and they're going to step out just to kind of just to kind of get it. It would be nice if my hips were even here. They're a little bit hiked up, but I'm not going to worry about it. It's hard enough as it is. And then we lift the big toe. You might want to pull the foot closer to your sits bone. And here we go. We're trying to stay on top of that joint. That's it. <laughs> You'd think this would be so hard. <laughs> and you could lift, lift your toes off and your shin off the floor if you want. So you can have your toes on the floor or you can lift them off the floor, which is, makes it even harder. <laughs> so maybe just conquer the one first, but it's fun to try these things. Actually, this side I can almost do it. Oh, there, I can do it now. <laughs> uh, let's relax for a second. So let's do <clears throat> another hip hinge. So inhale, hinge forwards. Exhale, squeeze up. We'll do two more of those. And I just want to do one more of that proprioception exercise back and forth. Okay, so one more of those. So we open. Just don't worry about perfection. And this time, do try to lift the shin. Why not? It doesn't have to be perfect. Unless your knee, no, unless your knee is jamming into the floor and it feels awful. There, there might be that. So, but if it's not jamming into the floor and it feels okay, just have fun with having your shin in your foot. So you have less touching the floor, more challenge, more crazy stuff happening. <laughs> Lengthen through the crown of the head. Feel the gravity line. Pull up through that line. And let's switch sides. Just go for it. The shin, you can't see my shin, but my toes are off the floor in my shin. <laughs> I could be cheating, but <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> Lengthen up. So a good cue I just thought of it is as I was talking to you, just thinking lengthening through the top of the head seems to help. At least it helps me. Hopefully it'll help you. All right. We'll finish on the knees. Actually, we're going to face this way. Grab two of your blocks, actually, if you have them. You don't have to use blocks for this. You could just use your mat, but if there are two blocks, if you don't have two blocks, or yeah, basically we're just doing a push up. We're gonna do, um, if you're elevated, there's more eccentric work. So we're gonna go a little, cause you're up higher, there's further down to go. Um, so we're gonna go down the hard way <laughs> with the, and go wide with these uh, straight legs. So no, you can do it. We'll only do three of these, but we don't have to come up with straight arms unless you're feeling very strong. So here we go. So start to lower, we're gonna go down for a count of five, four, Look a little bit ahead of where your top head is. Three. Now we're gonna rest on the floor. That's the good news. <laughs> rest your knees. You could come up. So just do a pelvic tilt, forehead down, lift your ribs. I'm gonna leave my knees down for the coming up part, but feel free to lift them up. You're gonna come up and then lift your knees. We come down, five, four, three, two, go super slow motion the way down, a little quicker on the way up. Slow motion on the way down. You can always put your knees down on the way down too, because I don't know how it feels, right? I said three, let's try five. <laughs> I lied, I just, sorry. I just didn't want to say five first, because then you might end the call on me. <laughs> Last one, you can always escape. That's the problem with Zoom, but no one has ever done that. But <laughs> and let's finish down on the floor. We'll stay down for a second. Just. Put the blocks out of the way. Put your left arm out to the side, right hand on the floor. Um, this one, if it's not a pro, I'll show you what it, it's this one. Some of, if it, it usually works for most people, but if it's too intense, I would do lying on your back with the twist option instead. But just step one foot back. I've got, I'll go this way so you can see me. We're just like this, getting a bit of a pec stretch. Breathe in, breathe out. And then we'll rock to the other side. We'll just do one of these. All right. And then, so you don't have to do a push up to get up. You could just pull your knees in and then bring yourself up to finish. And that way we end with nice open chest and shoulders. All right, so good stuff. I did record this, didn't I? Oh, good. <laughs> oh no, yes I did.